again, Fight Fans. I am Jason Burgos for SureDog.com. This is, of course, a new edition of Back Talk in what has been a pretty wild week in the world of mixed martial arts and especially the UFC. Um, this is not the first time I recorded this week's edition of Back Talk. This is now the second time because the original version I recorded with some fantastic answers and some great questions from the Sure Dog forums had to be scrapped because an hour after I did it, we found out that UFC 249, not going to happen. And the events coming up after Probably postponed too. Pretty much the Tachi Palace fights thing that we all had read about. And that was the secret arena for the UFC. That's not happening because of Disney. And 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 I am frustrated on my own level. Not as frustrated as many of the fighters going through this. And everybody's going through this. But before I even get to the questions. These great questions we've got from the Sherry Dog forums. After I, had, I couldn't use my first group of questions. I've got to talk about something. We are just about a day removed from the news, like I mentioned, of UFC 249 being postponed and and, and, our, and those events following it now being off. What has been a pretty controversial few weeks in UFC history, and that saying something, has been put to a halt by the Walt Disney Company, of all things, people. That's Could you imagine that? Walt Disney and that company knocked out the UFC in a way. That's pretty crazy to even think about. But that said, if you follow this space in the last few weeks, I've made it clear. I was not on board with this event really happening. I live in New York City where we seem to get record death numbers from the coronavirus daily. I mean, we are living in some scary times. But if this event had to happen, then so be it. I am pro fighter. In my mind, they are some of the hardest working athletes in all of sports. But unlike many other leagues, their level of compensation is far below the standard of other industries. I mean, we, we don't even got to talk about what some of the, the athletes in NBA and NHL and P, PG, PJ Golf or whatever are making. You know, um, but uh, and in the end, those are the people who really suffer the most in, in a situation like this. The UFC and most major promotions will be fine. They, they are a media company, you know, and they can continue to produce content and bring in revenue even when an event isn't even happening. But for the large majority of fighters, no fights means no money. You know, that said, I do have a great deal of respect for Dana White and the UFC for planning to, to compensate the fighters on the UFC 249 card, just like they did for those last, those lost, who's that lost fights at, at UFC London. It's a great thing. I really respect that. You know, the event happening probably maybe wasn't the best move. But paying the athletes for the difficult work put towards it, that is the best move. How much compensation remains to be seen, though. There were a, a lot of notable fighters on this card that likely will, will probably make it far better than the usual typical show money and win bonus that most fighters get. They will probably make some good standard rates, so will they pay them all of that? I mean, we'll see. I Hopefully they do, but you know, without a doubt that the UFC and their staff worked hard to try to make this happen. But that level of work and stress is not the level of a fight camp and the dieting regimen these fighters were in the midst of for the last few weeks because the promotion was hell-bent on putting on this card. You know, kudos to Bellator for postponing their slate of May events well in advance and not having their fighters go through the physical grind of a fight camp just to be let down a week before, or two weeks before. Not to mention, most of them were conducting camps under unusual circumstances with gyms around the country and around the world for that matter, on lockdown, closed. You know, I'm grateful that Disney did step up, make the tough decision early. The fact that these fighters would have had to cut weight, something that can compromise the immune system while surrounded by one of the most contagious viruses the country has dealt with in a generation. It was a situation asking for trouble. Could you, let's just think about this. Could you imagine if a couple of weeks after this event, a fighter or a trainer, you know, ended up on a ventilator somewhere because they had to develop some pneumonia because maybe the fighter got it. Maybe they, they, they just didn't even get it from the arena or the event, but just the traveling they had to do just to make this payday, this un take these unnecessary risks of traveling on planes and, 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 and uh, with, with close quarters of people and all these kinds of things. If, if someone like, you know, Calvin Cater or, or, 
or Justin Gaethje or some of these these talented fighters, comma worthy, ended up on a ventilator somewhere, that that wouldn't have been a good look whatsoever. You know, the the fan and media member in me is disappointed the event did not happen because I love this sport, but also appreciate the athletes in it. The window of financial gain in this industry is very small, but I am also appreciative that Disney saved saved the UFC from themselves. That is at least until Fight Island begins. All right, our first question for this week comes from Blessed Soldier. They ask, so with UFC 249 canceled, is Habib Nurmagomedov, Tony Ferguson back on? That's an excellent question. <laughs> I don't really know. Common sense, and especially from fan demand, makes you think it should. Why go back to an interim title fight, especially when you don't know what the future events until this Fight Island thing kind of gets settled, and if that's still not a guarantee that hasn't been finalized, or they're supposed to be working on it, and Dana White seems very confident on it, but I'll get to that kind of thing in a minute, but um, it, it seems like the, the logical thing, you probably go back to the fight that was supposed to headline this anyway, a lot of fans were disappointed that does it happen, and, and just make a title fight. Why go interim and then have to do this other thing and all this kind of just just make the fight happen? I mean, the only thing about it is if Fight Island is the only way that can happen, can U.S. fighters travel there and come back? How does that work? Is that, would the travel from private island, private island back to the U.S. I, I don't know what what the the standard and what the federal guidelines are right now from for a situation like that. So do you almost have to do Habib versus Connor because maybe their guidelines for going to those Russian island standards are different? I don't, really don't know. Um, I mean, it should be the fight that happened, but another interesting equation is, I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of respect for Justin Gaethje right now, you know, for what he did jumping on a super short notice to take on someone in the, the, the level of Tony Ferguson, that's already got to garner a bunch more fans that already, he already had, <laughs> he already had a bunch of fans, um, you know, logic tells me it's got to be Habib versus Tony Ferguson and just make it happen, despite the utter curse of that pairing, it's one of the most curse pairings in all of human history it seems like but yeah i think that fight's got to be the fight next it's unfortunate for justin gaethje you know in the end hopefully like i was talking about earlier compensation he made some money and probably only really had to train hard for about a week or so and still made some good money at the very least but um yeah his title picture hopes are really up in the air now with everything going on he if he even gets to shot probably wouldn't be till the end of the year at best anyway but yes ferguson khabib it's gotta happen next. All right, our next question for this week comes from John Mangala. They ask, will the fight island remain after the pandemic is over? That's an interesting question. Um, I guess it all matters on what you consider over for the pandemic. And I'm not sure in a situation like this, it'll really be over anytime soon. I mean, I don't think the, the only way I think you can call this over is when a vaccine is made. And that's supposedly supposed to be 12, anywhere from 12 to 18 months, because you got to go through clinical trials. Despite our president being a bit of a jackrip wagon sometimes and talking about various things and, and using medical uh, technology and all kinds of nonsense and, and possible vaccines out there early, you got to go through this stuff. You got to have testing. And so it could be 12 to a year to a year and a half before we're really clear this. This is a thing that can really linger. And if people get out there thinking it's over and we get a spikes and things go come back and and the, and the virus we have these all these other things go on it, it's hard to say um i would think not i would think it'd be too expensive for the ufc at some point they probably sure on some finite financial level can make it work based on what they're paying out what they're going to get in but at some point just going to arenas in the u.s getting ticket sales and all the revenue that comes from that and doing those kind of things and going back to the states um, it, it's probably the, the more logical, fiscal, ethically choice. If, if this made sense a long time ago, the UFC probably would have just did it a long time ago. You know, I, I doubt they just didn't think of it till now because of things. If, if it's something makes sense to do, they would do it money wise. They're all about the money. They're going to make the, the decision that makes them the most money. If this was a, a money making thing and it benefited them, they would have done it a long time ago, but it's not. 
That's why they don't run out of like a, a one arena all the time. It, it's, it doesn't make as much sense. They they want to get those big arenas that get all those big. I mean, look at those 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 gates they're losing out on, especially for UFC two forty nine. If that had happened in on a normal arena with that kind of a card, like million dollar one night gates, they're not gonna get that on on, on a private island, especially the private island just being set up for a cage and and production of a, a television broadcast. It doesn't have stands and all those other things. They don't you know yeah. So after the pandemic ends. No, I would think it's probably done. During the pandemic, however long that lasts, if it is a year to 18 months because of a vaccine, Fight Island really will be something we'll be talking about <laughs> over the next decade, possibly, if this thing even gets done, which is still iffy after what happened with 249 and Tachi Palace. So, But this could be one of those things we'll be talking about 10 years from now. You remember Fight Island? Remember that 2020 we had Fight Island? That shit was crazy, man. Our, our last question this week comes from Alan Partridge. All right, fair enough. Uh, why was WrestleMania 36 allowed to go ahead, but not UFC 249? And that's a great question. I can see a lot of, of the MMA fans who aren't wrestling fans going, this is bullshit, why let them do it? We let them do it, it's nonsense, you know? And, and that would be fair, but there's a lot of interesting factors that makes a big difference. Now, it's, surpri it's surprising that the UFC didn't get to, to have UFC 249 happen considering that they are using Native American land, which made it pretty much ungoverned by the federal or state government of California. So the fact that it didn't happen is surprising, but there's different factors. In this instance, Disney stepped in on Dana White and the UFC and said, ESPN, we're not comfortable with having this go forward. Shut it down. If there's no one that's going to air, I mean, the UFC, I guess, could have done it on a fight pass, but I guess they clearly did that they to keep their partnership with ESPN happy, and I'm sure contractually probably couldn't. They have to air it on ESPN. Uh, they can do it. So they got shut down. For the WWE, it's a different scenario. Clearly, one... Fox and USA Network aren't too bothered by this because they still been allowing them to do episodes of Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown without any issue for the last few weeks, despite going what's going on in the world and this, the country the last month. Also, WrestleMania was aired on the WWE Network. They're not beholden to any television partner. They own the network. That's their network. So they can air whatever the hell they want. And, and the subscribers can watch whatever the heck they want. And as long as they meet certain, you know, guidelines for, for television, radio. But um, that's a key factor. Uh, they were using their own studio. That, that, that This is... This shows you, as big as the UFC is, it's different than WWE. WWE has $2 billion television uh, uh, partnerships. They have their own facility headquarters. They built the WWE Performance Center before the UFC made theirs. The UFC pretty much copied off what the WWE has been doing. So they have their own performance center where they've been running NXT events out of for the, you know, or, or, or developing talent. Then they have full sale, but they already have that setup of running small, high level network broadcast TV events from a small studio so they have that they have tv partners that don't mind they have their own network that they can air things on contractually like a wrestlemania then florida is a different place we all know about florida man and how different florida is and the governor of florida ron DeSantis, is a lot different than other people i mean this guy just did stay at home mandates in the state april 1st while places like here where i'm at new york was like three weeks before that also, he's not coming down hard on certain gatherings for, like, religious reasons. So you got a different standard in the state that the WWE has their performance center and is running events out of. So if the UFC had that, if they had their setup and, and they ran shows out of Florida, they might have been able to get it done. But it, 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 maybe the standard of what people look at and see are different in terms of UFC is a sport and wrestling something else and wrestling is just a misfit anyway and people don't care. I don't know. It's hard to say. But it's as simple as that. While UFC's partnership with ESPN, a.k.a. Disney, has been hugely beneficial for them, in this instance, it hurt them because Disney has a standard of what they want and will allow. <laughs> they were not going to allow something to be broadcast on network that they own that they didn't like.